Welcome back to the channel Red Dirt Designs. On today's episode, we're going to make our own stencils with a stencil burner I got off Amazon. Here's to show you how well this stencil cutting technique works. These are a few stencils I've made over the years. I've used them for gifts. I've even used them for customer projects. I even used it on my own mailbox. I made our mailbox look like the lightning bolts were striking the numbers. I also do customer mailboxes. I did one here for a customer that wanted a Grim Reaper scene with the graveyard with lightning strikes in the background. I made my own lightning strike template for this mailbox. We're going to do one just like that today. The same customer had a motorcycle themed the exact same way as the mailbox. We did the graveyard scene on the motorcycle with the lightning bolts. One of the things you'll need for this project is a stencil burner. You can get one for about 15 bucks off Amazon. You also need some stencil sheets. You can get this also on Amazon. This varies from 10 to 20 dollars depending on the thickness and how many you need. The thicker the stencil, the harder it is to burn through, but it's also the more durable and the longer it'll last. Here I'm just drawing out my stencil. I'm just going to freehand draw some lightning bolts. I've done this several times so I'm very familiar with it. But if you have trouble, you can always just print off a picture of a lightning strike and trace right on over it. Once you're finished and you're happy with your image, or you've printed off your image, you'll need a pane of glass. You place your image underneath the glass. When you burn stencils on glass, it's a lot easier and smoother to make the cut. I actually learned this the hard way. When I first started, my cuts were horrible and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get it to cut smoothly. It was always really jagged and really hard to make cuts. You also want to make sure you tape your stencil down. That way your stencil doesn't move while you're burning your image. Once you have allowed your stencil burner to warm up, it's time to start cutting out your image. You'll want to take your time, go slow. You can always go back over it if you need to. Especially on a lightning strike, it doesn't have to be perfect. It actually needs to be a little more jagged. So if you watch, I'm actually kind of wiggling the burner while I move to make sure it looks like electricity and not just a line. I have this video in real time. Normally I speed up my videos. I feared it would be better if you saw just how long it actually takes. Now I'm going to quickly go over here and cut out my other lightning bolt. 
The only difference is if you can't draw your lightning bolts is you would literally just print off your lightning bolt image and place it under the glass. It'll be a little harder to see depending on the image you use, but you should be able to see through it and be able to make your cut, just the same as tracing something you already drew. Now I'm just coming back in here and I'm widening some of the areas, especially somewhere where we have a split. I like to make those a little wider. I've just noticed it looks a little better on lightning strikes. Okay, when we're finished and we're happy with it, we'll pull it on up. As you can see, you can see through it. This also is another time you can use some sandpaper and smooth out some of the roughness. It does leave some residue from the melted plastic. Now I'm using my Wada Eclipse airbrush and I'm gonna start painting these lightning bolts in. I'm just using a white base coat on a metal sign blank. This is just a really quick tutorial, so I'm actually not even going to do the clouds or anything. I might do a cloud tutorial later. If you guys would like to see a cloud tutorial, please put that in the comments. Once you're finished, you just peel up your stencil. If you see here, a little bit of overspray shot up underneath there. A lot of this will go away when we clear. You also can wipe it off. If you hold your stencil down a little better than I did, you won't have this problem. Now I'm just adding a glow effect. Where all the lightning intersects with each other, I like to put a little highlight. Now I'll go over it and do a light glow over all the lightning strike. I have a reference picture, so this is the way it looks in my reference, so that's what I'm adding to it. When you have a cloudy or hazy night, it really does this effect. Here are the finished lightning strikes. I think these things turned out excellent. I've actually purchased lightning strike templates in the past and I was not happy with them. That's why I ended up making my own. I hope this helps you make whatever stencil you want to make. Here's a cloud stencil that I made. I actually used the stencil burner to make this. I feel like the stencil burner does a great job on getting these textured edges they're not so perfect. A vinyl cutter does a really good job, but this here I can get a little bit more organic and a little rougher with my textures. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.